Well, hello. I wear glasses now, and I also have a lot of grey in the beard. So, I guess this is the ageing episode. I'm old! I don't usually take life advice from criminal masterminds, but there is a scene that's always stuck with me from The Usual Suspects, and it's a story about Kaiser Soze and how he learned the key to being the most powerful criminal in the world. They realised that to be in power, you didn't need guns or money or even numbers. You just needed the will to do what the other guy wouldn't. Will. It actually makes me think of this Will. This is Will, back in the day, explaining the key to his success. I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill. I will run. You would not be outworked. I will not be, be out outworked. Right. Period. But if we get on the treadmill together, <laughs> right, there's two things. You're getting off first, yeah. or I'm gonna die. Not dissimilar to Elon Musk's take on success. And then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. Okay. I mean, if, 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 if other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. I suppose it's a truism. If you have a willpower and a work ethic greater than anyone else, you massively increase your chances of success. But at a point, it comes with sacrifices. How did you get through that period of crisis? Yeah. 2000 and... Can we just break for a second? Sure, sure, sure. When I hear this advice centered on will and work ethic, I juxtapose it against all these reports of burnout and disengagement these days. I do wonder if working harder is good advice for most people. Most of the executives and leaders we work with already work very, very hard. It makes me think of Michelle's refrain. Hard work is the lazy choice. Oh, Michelle, where did you come from? I've been here the whole time. Okay, well this video is edited after the fact, so that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, the question I want to ask you is you discuss this in one of your keynotes that you give to clients. That hard work is the lazy choice. Can you explain that? Yeah, sure. Let me explain this with a story. The story of Alcoa. Save him for a worthy cause. In 1987, the aluminium manufacturer Alcoa appointed Paul O'Neill as their new CEO. Uh, excuse me, Michelle. We call it aluminum. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I'll do my best. The aluminium company was suffering financially, but in his first address to investors and analysts, Paul O'Neill did not mention cost cutting, growth, or profit. <clears throat> I want to talk to you today about worker safety. There was a stunned silence. Wall Street investors and analysts were alarmed. This was not the usual investor presentation. Now, before I go any further, I want to point out the safety exits in this room. Brokers were so alarmed, they advised their clients to sell the stock immediately. And while the price did dip temporarily, Paul O'Neill stuck to his plan. As Charles Duhigg recounts in his book, The Power of Habit, this relentless focus on safety not only improved safety, but turned Alcoa into one of the greatest financial success stories in corporate history. By my calculations, if you had invested a million dollars in Alcoa in 1987, then by the time Paul O'Neill retired in the year 2000, you would have received a million dollars in dividends over that time, and your stock would now be worth five million dollars. Lessons learned. Like every case study, it's multifaceted, so one can draw a number of lessons, but one that comes to mind is the power of prioritizing. This singular focus galvanized the organization. This prioritization required a discipline that seeped into every part of the organization and created more effective and more productive processes, machinery, and people. This was a leader who instead of trying to do lots of things and working harder to do them all, was instead willing to make hard decisions and have hard conversations. This takes courage, the ability to say no. If we apply this to our own work lives, I often say that hard work is the lazy choice because faced with a sea of options as to how we spend our time and our energy, combined with an avalanche of work coming at us, it can often seem easier to just work harder. What can be more difficult is to make really hard decisions and have really hard conversations. 
What will you have a disciplined focus on? And what are you going to push back on? How do you negotiate this with your stakeholders? Making the hard decision and having the hard conversation are rarely quite as scary as we think they might be. We procrastinate it, but when we actually do it, it can be really liberating. So go on, go do it. Well, you heard the woman, just do it. Go, 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 go.